Welcome as you are joining on the phone line on Facebook Live. You are most welcome. Those of us joining via Wisdom Assembly Live, please click on the share button to invite your friends, your family. This Bible study series is very, very important to God, important to me, important to the Holy Spirit, very important to my heart, I tell you. Hallelujah. Tonight we want to begin a new series that will take us into the new year on the power of prayer, on the power of prayer. We're going to be looking at different aspects of prayer from scriptures. Amen. So let us pray. Almighty and ever living Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you because you brought us thus far. Thank you for your grace, O oh God, that woke us up this morning, that took us out and brought us in. Some may still be at work connecting to this broadcast. Holy Spirit of God, we pray that you enlighten our darkness. We pray that you minister life to us. We pray that you give us a deeper understanding so that our heart can be connected and involved in what God is doing in this time. Lord, I pray that your children and I, none of us will be written off. Draw us closer, Holy Spirit. You are our helper. Draw us closer. Empower us. Give us understanding. Enlighten our darkness. And let the name of the Lord be glorified in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The power of prayer. Jesus said in Luke 18 and verse 8. Luke 18 verse 8. He said, I tell you that it will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? Will he really find faith on the earth? Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? Before I go into this study tonight, I'm going to try as much as possible not to be taking our time. I'll try and wrap it up every, for 30, 30 minutes, every Bible study by God's grace for better understanding. There's no point rushing through it, you know. During the last um, con Congress, just concluded Congress, anyone who has followed it will see so much emphasis laid on the issue of prayer. A lot of emphasis was placed on prayer to the end that our Father in the Lord for two consecutive days talked about prayer a lot. It shows the importance of what it is. He talked about casual prayer. He talked about deep prayers and so on and so forth. And he broke them down in different segments. I'm not actually following that segment even though i'll be touching on some of it at some time but i feel it's it's come to that time that the church needs to understand the potency of the grace that we have been given the potency of the grace that god has given you to be born again to be able to communicate with him. I watched the documentary of um, some people who have been ostracized from their families for years. They are trying to communicate with their families, but they couldn't communicate. They don't know where they are. They don't know how to communicate with them. Their hearts are broken into million pieces. They want to reach out to their loved ones, but they couldn't. But you and I, we have the opportunity 
every day, every moment to talk to God, to talk to the lover of our soul in the place of prayer, where you are not restricted, where you don't need to buy anything before you can do that communication, where you need you, you don't need anything. All you need is your heart, your mind, your voice. Praise the Lord. Jesus said, nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on earth? And if you think about this scripture, what does Jesus really mean concerning the scripture in regards to this scripture? It was after he gave, he spoke the parable of the persistent widow. He used it to teach us about prayer. Jesus is anticipating that we Christians, we will be slack in the place of prayer. And isn't that so true? Amen? Because many of us, we don't understand the value of prayer. And that's why prayer, most of the time, is not taken seriously. And should we eventually turn to prayer, it is always mostly to ask God for things. Mostly to ask God to punish somebody, to kill somebody, to destroy somebody. If we turn to prayer at all, the purpose of prayer and the power of prayer is much more than getting something from God. I am praying that you understanding the purpose of prayer tonight, a little bit of it, will open your eyes and open your heart to the power of prayer. I read a survey, a survey that was done on the purpose of prayer in 2005, 2005. One of the main questions asked was, what do you think is the most important purpose of prayer? What do you think is the most important purpose of prayer? And there were several kinds of responses, but I'm going to briefly touch on some of them and their percentile. 27% so of people said to seek God's guidance. 23% of people said to thank God. 19% of the people said to be close to God or the divine. 13% said to help others. 9% said to improve a person's life. 4% said for other things. And 5% said they don't know. So I want you to think about it, as I want to ask you too, what do you think is one of the most important purpose of prayer? Answer that in your own heart. Give yourself that answer. Think about your own answer. Give it a while. Will it fit in or does it fit in into the ones I just shared? Praise God. Or you will be in the category of those who don't know. But after tonight, you will begin to know. Praise the Lord. After this series, you will begin to know. I enjoin you to follow through because it's going to bless you. Praise God. You see, the basis of 
Luke 18, verse 8, which I just read to us, the basis of that parable and the basis of that uh, uh, statement Jesus made is something every one of us needs to take to heart. Very, very important. Because in verse 1, the Bible says, Then he spoke a parable to them that men, including women, the men there is not about gender, it's human beings generally, that men always ought to pray, always ought to pray and not lose heart or faint, always ought to pray. The church, Christians, always ought to pray and not to faint. The moment you don't pray, it means you have given up or you have lost faith in God. Not only because of what you want, but also because of your connection with God. Praise the Lord. Jesus is wondering if at his return, he will find a praying church. If at his return, he will find a praying people. If at his return, he will find a praying family. Praise the Lord. The question tonight again is, what is keeping you away from prayer? What is keeping you away from prayer? Is the love of God still burning deep in your heart? Is there a fire, that fire still going on in your heart for God? Praise the Lord. Why? Why are we passing up the opportunity to pray? Why do we pass it up? Why do we not want to pray when it is time to pray? Why do we not have our own time of prayer? There's a time for a congregation of prayer and there's also a time for our personal prayer. Why do we pass it up? Some will say, oh, 5.30 a.m. is too early to pray. But then when do you pray to start your day? What kind of prayer do you pray to start your day? Do you realize the, the grace that is released in the atmosphere when we wake up and we pray together? Praise the Lord. Prayer is a sweet thing. It is spending precious time with your loved one. That's what it's like. Spending precious time with someone you love deeply and dearly. Amen. Someone who is never tired of you, who is never tired of your voice. Praise the Lord. It is so sweet, so glorious to express our adoration to the Almighty God in the place of prayer. If you have been joining us at 5.30 a.m. prayers, that's how we started. Adoration, lavishing God with adoration. Because God is so well pleased. He's so well pleased with you when you do that constantly, not just once in a while. But when you do it constantly, when you lavish him with adoration constantly, because that is what the host of heaven does constantly. As it is in heaven, so it must be on earth. Praise the Lord. Adoration is what it starts with. Adoration is our appreciation of God. Is your appreciation of God, loving up on God, loving up so much on God. Very easy. I wrote a few down here as it came into my spirit, man. And I tell you, even as I wrote them down, there was, there was, 
this presence that overwhelmed my this atmosphere where I am. You know, telling God you are beautiful beyond description. You are worthy to be worshipped. You are worthy to be honored. Only you are God. Only you forever will be God. You are the only one of Israel. Your train fills the temple. You are holy, yet kind and loving. You are my hiding place. You are my guiding light. Your glory is the light of my life. It is in you I live, I move and have my being. There is no one else like you, O Lord. Only you are great and mighty. Without you, Jehovah, there is no substance to me. It is your joy, O Lord, that gives me strength. It is your love, O Lord, that gives me hope. It is the breath from you that keeps me alive. And it goes on and on and on and on. Even if it's a human being, you are lavishing praise and adoration unto like that. You can imagine how that person will feel. And we are created in the image of God. Listen to me, child of God. Because you are a carrier of the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit within you will adopt God through you beyond whatever you can come up with yourself. You just find yourself lost in it. Our early morning prayers, many times, I don't have anything written down, just comes deep from within, exalting God. And there you can easily come up with whatever you want to ask him for the day. Praise the Lord. You know, a Christian who does not know how to adore God, who does not know how to praise God, is far, far removed from the reality of who God is. Because if you have a relationship, a connection with God, glorifying God, praising God, adoring God will be one of the easiest things you can do. The easiest things you can do. Because the reality of God is within you. David said in Psalm 119 verse 164, Psalm 119 verse 164. Are you ready for this? David said, seven times a day, I will praise you. Seven times a day, I will, a carrier of God will do more than seven times. It comes moment by moment. You are just conscious of God. The moment you are conscious of God, to praise God for a minute, a second, five seconds, ten seconds, will be nothing at all. David says several times he deliberately praises God in a day. He says, why? Because you're righteous, because of your righteous judgments. How many times do you lavish praise on God? How many times do you go for that thing you like? Praise God. You know, the Bible says, and our general verse here really touched on this in Psalm 100 and verse 4. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving appreciation from our heart thinking thanking appreciating god all that god has done you know if we can write everything god has done for us down this year alone it's much more than oh my god a notebook full if you can practice writing down things you know that God has done for you. 
you find out that you have a lot of things to write. Enter his presence with thanksgiving, with appreciation. Lord, I am so grateful. I am great. It's because of you, Lord, that I am alive today. It's because of you. It's because of your grace, because of your mercy. And we are not saying it because it's not true. We are saying it because that's the truth. Should God be removed from us, where will we be? Who will we remain to be? It says, and into his courts we praise with adoration. It says, be thankful to him. Bless his name. The Bible says, it's a good thing to give thanks to God. A good thing for God, a good thing for you, because it carries great benefits. Praise the Lord. David lavished adoration on God in that place. Praise the Lord. If you see, I'm going to read it. Oh, wow. Time is so fast spent. In 1 Chronicles 29, 1 Chronicles 29, verse 10 through to 13. 1 Chronicles 29, 10 through to 13. Look at how David lavished praise to God. You will wonder, thinking that David wanted something from God. And that was why he was lavishing so much praise on God. No, he wasn't looking for anything. Actually, they were giving to God for the building of the temple. Himself and the people. And yet, the way he lavished praise on if this is all that we did tonight, because I want to keep to that time. If this is all we did tonight, then let it sink into your spirit, man. David went on and on. First Chronicles 29, 10. I, I, I'm just going to read up to 13, verse 13. He said, therefore, David blessed the Lord before all the assembly in the place where they were giving offering. This is what David was saying. They were giving building offering. This is what David was saying. And David said, Blessed are you, Lord God of Israel, our Father forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power and the glory, the victory and the majesty for all that is in heaven and is in, in earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom. Oh Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor comes from you, and you reign over all. In your hand is power and might. In your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. Now therefore, our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. This is in giving offering. In continuation was like, Lord, we are aliens before you. Who are we? Who am I and this your people? We are aliens. We are giving back to you what you gave us. Oh, brethren, do you understand the, the intensity of this adoration? Not because you want something, but because you are presenting him with something. You are presenting him with posterity, even to the end that God told David, okay, thank you, but you can't build for me. And David was still not mad at God. How can we be mad at God? Do we have the capacity? Do we have the ability? To even be mad at God for what? You can imagine the power that is released here. The kind of power that brings God's presence to where you are. When your heart is lavishing him with adoration. This is where you, 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 you open up. You are, you, are, you are open to the point where you become totally vulnerable 
David must have laid prostrate before him. If I know David's character, he must have laid prostrate before the people, before the Almighty God, saying, Who am I? Who are these your people? We are aliens. We are strangers. Vulnerable to see your weakness. Vulnerable to the sense where you see your, your own weakness and you begin to confess your fault to the Almighty. Let me tell you something. When you are so engrossed in the presence of God and the presence of God has enveloped you, um, there is no possibility of hiding who you are anymore. There's no possibility. It's just be, it's just like when you are genuinely in love with somebody, they know your secrets. They know your secrets. We have all kinds of examples in the Bible. And you two look at your life with the ones you really love. They know your heart. They know your secret. They know what is in your heart. You tell them what they didn't know even about you before. That's the intensity of that presence of God, the way it is, where you can't hide your fault anymore, where you can't hide your sins anymore. The Bible says, He that covereth his sins will not prosper, but the one who confesses and forsake them will have mercy. What does this tell you again? It's in that same place you find mercy. Because when you are vulnerable, you are open, you are exposed. That's where you find mercy. Because at that time, God is not coming with judgment. He's coming with grace. He's coming with mercy. Mark Shatelia. And you and I know, even though I'm going to stop here, because I said I'm going to make it 30 minutes every Bible study night. So much so to unpack. But if you get this tonight, you are better on your way to connecting with God. You are better on your way catching the attention of the Almighty God. Let it not be a burden to lavish God with adoration. Don't look at God as you will look at a man mortal, as you will look at a man. No, God is not a man, praise the Lord. When it comes to sin, what good can you do to, to, to erase your sins? There's no good. We'll talk about that and some other things next week by the grace of God. Time flies so quickly, but I want to appreciate you for tuning in tonight. It's just in bite sizes so that you will think about it, so that you will remember it. Lavish God with adoration. Jesus said, nevertheless, when the Son of Man returns, when he comes, will he really find faith? Will he find you praying? Will he find you worshiping? Will he find you praising? Will you find you walking in the light? When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory shines on our way. I'll see you next week in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. If this few minutes has been a blessing to you, so a seed to it. Lavish worship and praise to the Almighty God. God bless you. Until I come your way next week, Wednesday, but by God's grace, with some assembly, we'll be praying tomorrow morning, 5.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. Every information you need is on our website, www.wisdomassembly.org, 5.30 a.m., only for 30 minutes. And then on Sunday, we'll be back 11 a.m. God bless you. Amen. Good night.